Live from the ABC7 Broadcast Center, this is ABC7 News at 6 on your side. First at 6 tonight, we're learning more about the Texas healthcare worker who became the first person to contract Ebola in the U.S. Family members and the ABC station in Dallas identify her as Nina Pham. And tonight, investigators are trying to explain how Pham got the potentially deadly virus. Scott Thuman is live in our satellite center with the latest developments. Scott? Yeah, Maureen, right now the CDC says it has its top team on the ground in Dallas to monitor all of the hospital workers who cared for that first patient, Thomas Duncan, who died last Wednesday. Now the concerns have just been amped up because the nurse who also now has Ebola was wearing protective gear while tending to him. We need to consider the possibility that there could be additional cases. How did 26-year-old nurse Nina Pham, despite taking precautions while treating Thomas Eric Duncan, become infected? Was she properly suited up? Do health care workers need better equipment? All topics today as President Obama was briefed on efforts to stop the spread. Worries amplified since it's no longer just about keeping it out of the U.S. It is now here. If you have a cut in your skin, it can get in directly. But otherwise, if it's on your skin and you touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth, that's how you get infected. It could be alive for hours. Healthcare workers and police now canvassing the neighborhood of the infected nurse, and the dynamics have changed. While they were monitoring 48 Duncan contacts, now there's a new chain, one close relation to FAM and her dog as well, since there are questions about transmission involving animals and experts debating if all Ebola patients should be sent to one of four specialty hospitals since Dallas isn't one of them. That is something that should be seriously considered. And personally, I think that is not a bad idea at all. Whatever we do on that issue, it's very important that every hospital be prepared to diagnose someone with Ebola. CDC detectives are now looking at how FAM became infected because they want to know if it was while she was taking off her protective suit, if it might have touched something, then she touched it. A lot of possibilities there. Some figures though show it's not a big surprise. One in 20 Ebola patients are healthcare workers who are just trying to help. Maureen. Thank you so much, Scott. There's a dispute today over whether to send the ashes from incinerated items belonging to Ebola patient Thomas Eric Duncan. A Louisiana waste disposal facility says it will not accept the ashes until state officials agree they will not pose a threat to the public. Louisiana's attorney general plans to go to court to block the transportation of the ashes to the state. Duncan, you may remember, died last week after becoming the first person diagnosed with Ebola in the U.S. The CDC has released the steps healthcare workers should take if they suspect a patient has the Ebola virus. First, the hospital should check for the symptoms of Ebola, including fever, headache, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle pain, or bleeding. Also, ask if the patient has traveled to an Ebola-affected area. If Ebola is suspected, the patient should be placed in a private hospital room, and the CDC says anyone entering the room should wear protective gear put on in a specific order. Hospital scrubs first, then boots, a waterproof gown, face mask, goggles, and gloves.